Handicapper Steve here, handicapping the racing from Epsom Downs here on Saturday. It is June the 2nd, 2018. It's Derby Day from Epsom, and I'm going to look at all the races, including the Derby. But before I get on to that, remember to please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kit 5 for more selections for race courses around the world, and join me next week here on YouTube for my Belmont Stakes preview video. That should be hopefully up by next Thursday. Uh, you know, we have an excellent week of racing ahead uh, all across the world but today's card from that episode is a great day a uh, great card of racing um, you know you have the dash which is one of my favorite handicaps um, you have the derby of course and you have the diamond which is a great race um, so let's get on to it starting off with race number one from Epsom the first race to 2 o'clock, it's the Investic Private Banking Handicap. Class 2 Handicap, going for a purse of $67,500. This race is for 3-year-olds, only rate 0 to 105. Field of 11 horses, going the distance of ground of 2,000 meters, or the distance of ground of one mile and one quarter on the turf course. The ground is rated soft, so just keep that in mind. My top selection here... I like the 11 horse George. I'm going to go 11-1-5 in the Tricast, so the Trifecta. 11-1-5, Tricast, Trifecta. Top pick number 11, fi uh, number 11 George, 15-1, to Holly Doyles on the Sylvester Kirk trained 3-0 Gelman by Dragon Pulse. His horse is most recent outing came on the 24th of May, last week at Chelmsford. One mile class 4 handicap. His horse finished 4th by 5.5 lengths that day. You know, he, he, he ran very well, I think, that day from a little bit of a not-so-good poster, a little traffic trouble. For him to overcome the traffic trouble, he, he ran quite well there. Before that, 19th of April at Newmarket, one mile class four handicap. Horse finished fourth by four and a half lengths and just didn't have a lot left in the tank for the final stretch run. Definitely need that race first off the layoff. And then on the 19th of October at Brighton Yielding Ground, one mile and made an auction. Horse finished second by four and a half lengths. If this horse saved a little bit more ground that day, I think this horse could have possibly won, but it would have been a small margin. It was just a little bit too wide there, Brighton. At Brighton, you want to be a little bit uh, towards the inside, lower post draw, not wide post draw. Uh, and then before they hear it, Epsom. Heavy ground, seven furlongs, class four handicap. He finished this horse finished second by one quarter lengths. This horse ran well that day. A little erratic though in the stretch, but other than that, just missed at the end. Wasn't you know it was, it was a decent run there. Um, I like this horse a lot here today. At 15 to 1, I think this horse got a piece fits. Watch out. Another horse I like here is the one horse Courthouse. 4 to 1. Robert Havlin is on this John Gowson train 3 year Colt by Dawn Approach. This horse is most recent out and came two weeks, ago, two weeks ago now at Newmarket. 19th of May. One mile and a quarter in illicit stakes. Horse been second by half length behind Old Persian. This horse just couldn't get the jump on Old Persian, who just ran a little bit better, but this horse ran uh, quite well first off a little bit of a break. Before that, 7th of March at Kempton. One mile class 2 conditions race. Horse been second by three quarters length behind Gronkowski, um, who's uh, who's going to run uh, next weekend here in America, here in New York, uh, in the Belmont Stakes. His horse just couldn't catch Gronkowski in that uh, Derby trial. He, he was just second best there. Uh, and then at Linkfield, one mile class three handicap, January 20th. Horse went by three and three quarter lengths. It was like a paid workout. There was only three other rivals. He had 44 cents a dollar. Quick enough, nicely, very easy victory there. And then Newcastle, one mile class five main race early January. Horse went by one three quarter lengths. Quick enough, nicely, very easy victory there. Um, he should like the wet going a lot. Um, you know, watch out for him at 4-1. to one, But, um, you know, 4-1 to is not the best price. Uh, but, uh, you know, if he goes up in odds, I'll put a small each-way wager on him. So to recap my bets for the first from Epsom, the 2 o'clock. As a top selection here, I'll go with the 11-horse George. I might also do a small each-way wager on the 1-horse Courthouse if his odds are nice enough. I'm going to go 11-1-5 in the Tricast of the Trifecta. So now let's get on to race number 2, the 235. Race number two, the 235 from Epsom. It is the Group 3 Princess Elizabeth Stakes. It's a Group 3 race for Class 1 horses, going for a purse of $121,500. This race is for three-year-olds and upwards. Phillies mares only. Field of eight horses, going the distance of ground of 1,700 meters, or the one mile and one sixteenth distance on the turf course. My top selection here, I like the number two horse, Lincoln Rocks. I'm going to go 268 in the Tricast of the Trifecta. 268 Tricast Trifecta. Top pick number two, Lincoln Rocks. 3 to 1. Daniel Thedhope is on this David O'Mara trained 5 year old Philly by Rocka Gibraltar. Horses most recent adding him on the 12th of May at Linkfield. 
firm ground, seven furlongs in the group three, char 12 stakes. Horse been second by a half length that day. Quick enough nicely, just missed at the end. Very respectable race for this horse, um, second off the break. Major improvement off the start before it came a week earlier on the 5th of May at Goodwood. Yielding ground, one monoclass, one listed stakes. Horse finished third by one length and just kind of weakened out of it upon a few strides of the race. Couldn't keep up with them, but it was the horse's first start off the layoff, so maybe give this horse a little bit of an excuse there. And then before that, last fall, the 29th of September at Newmarket, yielding ground, one mile in class, one listed stakes. Didn't really run well there either. Finished fifth by three lengths, and he just kind of weakened out of it. Few strides of the race, never had that good acceleration. Horse's last victory came at York uh, during the Ebor meeting last year. Seven prongs, class two handicap. This horse won by one quarter lengths. Even with high weight and a wide post he just ran incredibly well that day. Very nice victory staying. But, um, you know, after that, he really didn't run well after that at Sandown and the, uh, and the Atlanta Stakes. Um, you know, finished ninth by 14 lengths, and he just ran absolutely shitty. But um, I think coming here, um, good post good front-end horse. I really like this horse's chances at 3-1. to one, Watch out for him. Another horse I like a little bit here is going to be the sixth horse, um, Wilhelmina. 9-2, to two, Frankie de Torres on this one. Um, this five-year-old mare by Zothany. Uh, you know, this horse ran the Dahlia Stakes a few weeks ago at Newmarket. Uh, uh, going the 1800 or mile in the eighth distance, she finished second by four lengths. She just couldn't catch the winner, Widia, who uh, sadly after that race was injured and then retired. Widia ran a great race. This horse was just uh, second best behind her. But before that, in the uh, illicit stakes at Newmarket in the fall, mile in the eighth, 1800 meters, October 13th, horse finished fifth by 12 lengths, and again just had nothing there. A lot of horses that weekend I've noticed at Newmarket on the 13th of October didn't really fire. Either ran well or ran absolutely shitty. This horse ran shitty there. And then before that, in uh, Ireland. At Garin Park, mile 316, some of the 16th in a group three. Finished third by 11 lengths and, you know, quickened up a little bit, but it wasn't his day to win. Um, but this horse had a, you know, a, likes this distance uh, and uh, likes going around a turn uh, mile, not a straight mile. And I think here today, second off the break with Frankie Tutorial, but I really like this horse's chances um, since it's not a straight mile, it's a turd mile, shall I say. 9-2, um, uh, to two, watch out for this horse to run a big one. So to recap my bets for today's second race from Epsom, the 235. It is the Group 3 Princess Elizabeth Stakes. Going to go with the two-horse Lincoln Rocks as the top selection. I'll go 268 in the Tricast of the Trifecta. I might also put a little small each-way wager on the six-horse if the odds are right for me. So now let's get on to race number 3, the 3 10 from Epsom. The 310, it's the Group 3 Diomed Stakes. It's for Class 1 horses, going for a purse of $121,500. This race is for 3-year-olds and upwards field of 8 horses, going the 1,700 meter trip, or 1 mile and 1 16th on the turf course. My top selection here, I like the number 1 horse A-Rod. I'm going to go 172 in the Tri-Cast of the Trifecta. 172, tri cash Trifecta, top pick number one, A-Rod, 3-1, to one. Ocean Murphy's on this David Simcock train, 7-year-old horse by Telefio. Um, you know, this horse uh, spent some time down under uh, last um, last year, uh, but since coming back, this horse is, uh, since coming back to Europe, this horse has run quite well. Most recently on the 14th of May at Windsor, one mile in illicit stakes, horse won by your neck that day. He quickened up nicely, had a very nice victory there, uh, and it was an improvement off his start before which came at Kempton. Seven Frongs Class 3 Conditions Race. Horse finished second by head. Uh, Gelato, who won that day, is a very nice horse. This horse just couldn't get him at the end. Um, and then before that, Woodbine here in North America. One mile in the Woodbine Mile. He finished fifth by three and a half lengths that day. 50 to one. Just really didn't have the best turn of foots at the end. World Approval and Lancaster Bomber who finished second. Just ran two better races. Uh, I believe World Approval here in the state side. Uh, went on to win the Brewers Cup Mile and then went on to... Uh, bring home champion turf horse here in the states but uh, this horse wasn't catching him there and then before that this horse was running in australia and this horse really didn't do well there he ran in the uh victoria handicap at caulfield last april he finished 16th by tw two and three quarter lengths never really had a run there a week earlier in the doncaster mile at randwick one mile is, uh y you know this horse was 19th by 18 lengths never really ran there uh and then probably the best race came on the first of april at randwick six snap rungs 13 numbers in the group one liverpool city cup horse from second by length he just missed at the end but he ran a group decent effort there i think here mile 16th good post uh, come back to the UK for this third start. I like the Sorcerer's Chance a lot. Watch out for him. So to recap my bets for the third race from Epsom, the 310, it's the Diomed Stakes. Gonna go with the one horse, A-Rod. Gonna go 172 in the Tri-Cast of the Trifecta. So now let's get on to race number four. 
the 345, the fourth race from Epsom. It's the one of my favorite races of the afternoon behind the Derby. It's the Investic Corporate Banking Dash Handicap, Class 2 Handicap, going for a purse of $135,000. This race is for three-year-olds and upwards here. Field of 20 horses going the distance of ground of 1,000 meters with a quick five furlongs on the straight course. My top selection here in a very wide open, wide open race I like the number five horse, Blue de Vega. Uh, I'm going to go five, nine, eleven, try cash trifecta. Basically, that's my top three. But to tell you the truth, I'm probably going to box them all in a exact box or a forecast box. Um, so uh, I'll talk about all three of these horses, starting off with the five horse, Blue de Vega. If I had to give you a top pick out of the three of them, it would be Blue de Vega, 12 to 1 Ocean Murphy's on this um, Robert Cowell trained five year old horse by Loop de Vega. Horse's most recent outing came about two and a half weeks ago now, the 19th of May, at Thirsk. Firm ground, five prongs on a Class 2 handicap. This horse finished second by a neck that day. He quickened up nicely that day. He just missed at the end, but he ran a great race with a little bit of a high weight of 130 pounds. I think coming here with a little bit softer ground, which this horse should really like, a lower weight, I think this horse should really excel a little bit. Before that, the 20th of April, six weeks ago now at Newberry, yielding ground, five prongs on a Class 2 handicap. He finished fourth by one and three quarter lengths. Again, he quickened up a little bit, wasn't a bad outing there, uh, and then a Muscles Bar on heavy ground, five prongs, class two conditions race, 31st of March, horse finished third by five lengths, he never really got into the race that day, it just wasn't his day to win, um, and then before that, uh, at the opening meeting at Doncaster, six prongs, turf course, and the list six, finished eighth by 14 lengths, never really got into it, um, but um, I think, uh, you know, this horse, looking at his running, st uh, looking through his form guide, he doesn't really run it well in the uh, early portions of the flat season, uh, he, he he starts getting good around mid-May, and uh, he's been, you know, it's been through and through, so he's finally getting good again. And I think here today at 12 to 1, he's really run a big race. Watch out for him. Um, another horse I like here is the 9 horse, uh, Tar Tarbush. Uh, 12 to 1 here. Cam Harty is on this Paul Midgley trained 5 year old gilding by Bahamian Bounty. You know, this horse had a race here at Epsom a few weeks ago. 5 frongs with a Class 3 handicap. Horse finished ninth by three and a quarter lengths that day and just was never really into it. Highway probably had something due to it. It just wasn't his day to win. Uh, a few weeks earlier at Kempton, five rungs on the poly track for class two handicap. Horse been seven by eight lengths and just had a disaster trip that day. A little traffic and he just never got into it. Um, weakened out of it. Uh, and then before the Haydox heavy ground, five rungs class two handicap. Horse finished third by neck. Wide post strike. Just never got into it again that day. He lost by the at the finish. But, um, you know, this is the kind of horse that will love the heavy ground, or it's not heavy ground, the softer ground. Um, and I think here at 12 to 1, he could be uh, running a good one at the end, so watch out. And another horse I like here is the 11 horse Dark Shots. Um, James, uh, uh, Jamie Gormley is on this one. Um, this horse um, ran in this race last year and finished second by a nose. Just missed at the end, but ran a great race. Had a great uh, move at the end. Um, but after that race here last year at Epson, this horse, you know, kind of fell a little bit. You know, he, he finished fifth in Alyssa Stakes a few weeks later at Salisbury. Uh, another fifth place finish at Windsor in a Class 2 handicap in a July, and then at Windsor after that, a fourth place finish in a Class 3 handicap, and then he fell off the mat completely at uh, Glorious Goodwood, five furlongs Class 2 handicap, finished 14th by seven, t seven lengths. Um, we're still waiting for him to finish that race. He just never really ran, uh, beat one horse home that day, but his one race this year at York a few weeks ago to five furlongs Class 2 handicap, he ran a very good race, finished second by neck. He just missed at the end. Like I said, wasn't a bad run. He's supposed to carry 117 pounds, but with the five pound apprentice up, it's going to carry 112, which I think is a great weight in the spot. And with that extra weight, I think the source could be really flying at the end. Five to one, watch out for him. So to recap my bets for today's fourth race from Epsom, the fourth, the 345, uh, it's the dash handicap. I'm going to go with the as a top selection here. I'll use the five horse blue de Vega. I'm going to go. 5, 9, 11 in the TriCast of the Trifecta. That's my top three, but to tell you the truth, I'm probably going to play an Xacta box or a Forecast box here, 5, 9, 11. So, now, let's get on to race number five, the 4.30, the Derby from Epsom. The fifth race, the 4.30 from Epsom. It's the feature race of the afternoon. It's the Group 1 Investic Derby, or Derby, shall I say, since I'm here in America. It's a 
grade, a Group 1 race for Class 1 horses going for a purse of just over $2 million American dollars. This race is for three-year-olds only colts here. A uh, field of 12 horses going the distance of ground 2,400 meters or the derby distance of one mile and one half on the turf course. Very nice race here and I think there's some horses, uh, you know, some horses that are going under the radar here and I think that's the case for my my top selection here, the two horse, Delano Roosevelt. I'm gonna go two seven eight in the tricast of the trifecta. Two seven eight tricast trifecta. My top selection here, the two horse, Delano Roosevelt. He's under the radar, and I think he's a very good horse here. He should love this distance. He's breaking. He has a good barrier post drop from the four barrier, and uh, you know he gets you know Brian who trains this one. Shamey Hefferman is on this one for Coolmore. You know this horse. He's run very well in, the, in his uh, five starts. Most recently, 13th of May at Leopardstown in Ireland. Good ground, a mile quarter, 2,000 meters in the Derby trial. This horse finished second by three quarters length behind Hazapur. He's running back in this one here today. This horse he just missed at the end, but he ran a very good race behind Hazapur that day. Um, you know, before that at Leopardstown, 14th of April, very waterlogged ground, a mile a quarter, and the uh, Valley Sack Stakes. He finished second by half length behind Nelson, who I believe is a. Uh, a cool more horse also uh, this horse again he ran a great race he just missed at the end but you know it, it wasn't a bad run it, like I said getting the mile and a half for the first time this horse really excel and out of all the Aiden O'Brien horses um, running this weekend at Epsom I think this is the uh, the one that's going on under the radar and I think he has a very strong chance to win um, you know looking at his races as a two year old he ran quite well his, his worst finish was a third place finish and the um, in the champions juvenile stakes at Leperstown last September. He finished third by three and three quarter lengths and never really got into it that day. But other than that, you know, he's run quite well. His only victory came at Leperstown in his first career out and going a mile in the main race. Won by head, quickened up nicely there. After that, finished third at Leperstown. And then the uh, Barris Ford Stakes at Nace in late September 2017. He finished second by two and a half lengths behind Saxon Warrior. Again, he just couldn't catch Saxon Warrior, who I think is a better horse at the mile distance. But this horse here today at mile and a half, like I said many times, he should really run a big one at 12 to 1, I'll be all over him Saturday morning for me, Saturday afternoon for you guys, so um, watch out for him. <clears throat> Another horse I like a lot here is the 7 horse, also Roaring Lion. He's 7 to 1 here in the States. I told you he's very, he's bet down in the UK markets. Um, he's a 3 0 Colt by Kim's Joy. He has American pedigree uh, straight through. Um, they would love to see this horse maybe run on dirt because he has some street sense on the uh, damn side. Um, who won the 2007 Kentucky Derby here in America at Churchill. Uh, street sense, very good horse. Uh, very underrated, I think. But uh, Ocean Murphy's on this one for John Gossens. This uh, 3 0 Colt by Kim's Joy, owned by Qatar racing here. You know, this horse ran the Dante a few weeks ago at York, and he put on a show. He won by four and a half lengths. This horse was crying out for longer distances. They kept running this horse in a mile. When they got to that extended mile two furlong, he just quickened up nicely and had a very nice victory there. He could have won by more, but Ocean Murphy didn't want to kill the horse. It was a great race for this horse. Before that, the 2,000 guineas, he finished fifth by two and a quarter lengths, and he never really got going that day. A little, he, he just stayed. It wasn't his day to win there at the mile. And then the Craven Stakes at um, Newmarket uh, a mile on the uh, 19th of April. Finished third by nine lengths. He needed that race first off the layoff. And like I said earlier, mile just not to his liking. He never really got there. Um, yeah, but before that, he had a very good well, somewhat good second place finish in the Racing Post Trophy. Finished second by a neck behind Saxon Warrior, who this horse, uh, who Saxon Warrior again, who beat this horse in the 2000 Guineas. This horse, you know, was a little erratic in the final stretch run. If he was a little bit more straight, I think he could have got the victory, but he he, 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 he had to keep the straight course there. Uh, and then the Royal Lodge at Newmarket, a mile last September. He won by a neck. He quickened up nicely. had a very easy victory. This is the kind of horse should love the mile and a half distance today. He's a good post draw. 7-1 to one here, on the state, here in the United States is a good price. I know he's a lot lower in the UK markets, but 7-1, to one, I'll take my chance with him also. I'll do a small each-way wager on him, so watch out for him. Another horse I have third for my TriCast is the 8-horse Saxon Warrior, 4-5. to five. Ryan Moore's on this one for Aiden O'Brien. This horse, you know, he, he, he's coming into this race with a lot of questions on my behalf. Can he get the mile and a half? 
will he be able to break well from an inside post draw here today? Um, and, um, you know, he, he just has a lot of questions for me. He, he did run the 2,000 guineas very nicely a few weeks ago. He won it by one and a half lengths, quick and a nice easy victory. But I always, I always think this horse is going to be a great mile, just a mile and a quarter, to a mile to a mile and a quarter. A mile and a half might be pushing it, I think. But, um, you know, he won very nicely before that. He, he, he won the Racing Post Trophy very, very nicely um, to a point. Like I said, if, if um, Roaring Lion kept a little bit of straight course, I think the uh, Roaring Lion might have won that day. But he, he, he got the victory there. And then Bear Sports Stakes at Nice. He won by two and a half lengths, being Delano Roosevelt. That was a very nice victory there. And he broke his mane very nicely at Cura late last uh, August. But like I said, questions for him inside post, uh, the distance. Um, but, you know, I, 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 at four to five here in the States is too low for me. Um, I think you have, you'll find better value with the, um, the my top selection two horse Delano Roosevelt and the seven horse Royal Lying here in the states at seven to one at the minute. Um, I, I, I like I said, just questions for Saxon Warrior for me. So he won't be an each way wage for me. He'll be at the end of a tri cast for me. Um, but to recap my selections now. For the fifth race from Epsom, the 430, it's the Group 1, Investic Derby. As a top selection, I'm going to go with the two-horse Delano Roosevelt. Um, I'm going to do a small each-way wager also on the seven-horse Roaring Lion. I'm going to go 278 in the Tri-Cast, uh, the Trifecta. So now let's get on to race number six, the 515. Race 6 to 515 from Epsom. It is the Investig Out of Ordinary Handicap, Class 2 Handicap, going for a purse $67,500. This race is for 4 year olds and upwards, rated 86 to 105. Field of 19 horses going the distance of ground of 2,400 meters or the 1 mile and 1 half distance on the turf course. My top selection here, I like the number 15 horse, the number 15 horse Dash, for, uh, dash of Spice. I'm going to go 15 6 11 in the tri cast of the trifecta i know crazy giving out a tri cast in the 19 horse field but you could always box it uh even do a, a exacto or forecast box here um a combination i believe you guys call it uh, over the seas um but um I, but as a top selection here, i really like the 15 horse dash of spice six to one Sylvester de Sousa is on this david ellsworth train for your cult by telefio um this horse is most recent ad it came out the 23rd of may so about uh, two weeks ago now or excuse me 10 days Go now at Kempton. Uh, mile three, it's 2200 meters on the poly track and a class three handicap. This horse ran quite well that day, finished second by one and a quarter lengths. He couldn't catch the one who just ran that little better race, but this horse had a decent turn of foot with a little bit of a lower weight here. I really like this horse's chances because he had a great race back here a month ago at Epsom. 25th of April, a mile and a quarter, and a class two handicap. He finished second by a length, and he had a little bit of a wide post show, but he, he was coming well at the end. It wasn't a bad out in there off the break. And then the 13th of December at Lingfield, a mile and a quarter on the pile track, class five main race. Horse won by one three quarter lengths. You want speed from the rail going two turns at Lingfield on the pile track, and this horse had it. He just won very nicely there. Um, you know, he like I said, this horse has has run here in the past. His last one was very good, and his first one here was very good also, which came the first. October, a mile and a quarter, and a class five main race. Horse been second by two lengths. He just missed at the end, but you know, ran another gr brilliant race. This is the kind of horse that you really like the mile and a half here today. She like a little bit given the ground. Watch out for him to run a big one at six to one. Now looking over the other horses I have in this um, tri-cast here, um, you know, the six horse who is Pacify, Harry Bentley's on this one, he looks like he can maybe get a piece of it, and if his odds are nice enough at post, maybe I'll do a small each way wager on him. You know, he's the he's the kind of horse that should like yielding or soft ground, which you'll probably see today, and he's a horse, he ran quite well here a few weeks ago uh, in the um, in a Class 2 handicap here at Epson, Mile Quarter, April 25th, he finished fourth that day, Dash of Spice, remember, did finish second by the horse he closed up well again that day but he was a little bit too wide to get the victory uh, today he has a better post show from the inside and i think like i said he's a horse that a little bit of a price if he's if he's nice enough i'll do a small each way at wager on him he can definitely get a piece of it um so watch out for him also um so to recap my bets for the six from epsom the 515 it's the investig out of the ordinary handicap gonna go as a top selection to the 15 horse dash of spice i might also do a small each way wager on the six horse pacify but as a uh, my top three or my tri cast here is going to go 15 6 11 15 6 11 so now let's get on to race number seven the 550 from epsom the 550 it's the investic asset asset management handicap class two handicap going for a purse sixty seven thousand five hundred dollars this race of four-year-olds and upwards rated 86 to 105 
field of six horses going the uh, excuse me, field of sixteen horses, not six, sixteen horses going the distance of ground of twelve hundred meters or six furlongs on the turf course. My top selection here, I like the twelve horse, the twelve horse Aspan Sam. I'm gonna go twelve to eight in the tricast of the trifecta. Twelve to eight tricast trifecta. Top pick number two, Ashpan Sam. Um, James Sullivan is on this um, David Drinkwater train, nine-year-old golden by Firebreak. This horse's most recent outing came two weeks ago now on the 18th of May at Newberry. Firm, dry, firm ground, six furlongs and a class two handicap. He finished third by two lengths that day. At 66 to one, this horse, you know, ran quite well. Just lacked a little bit at the end, but ran a decent race off the break. I think second off the break here uh, on this race course, a little lesser quality race. I really like this horse's chances a lot. Before that, this horse ran the 7th of August, 2017 at w Windsor. Yield new ground, six furlongs and a class three handicap. Horse finished seventh by seven and a quarter lengths. I think highway probably cost this horse to victory that day. Just really couldn't get that good closing kick at the end. And then a Chester last July, yielding ground, five furlongs, thousand meters in class three handicap. Horse finished fifth by two and a half lengths. Just couldn't get the course in front of him. But this horse had a start here on a Thursday afternoon, uh, Thursday evening back in July here at Epsom. Six furlongs, class four handicap. This horse ran very well. Finished third by two and a quarter lengths. You know, just missed at the end, but ran a brilliant race. But that race, this horse had a high weight of 142 pounds, which probably cost this horse a victory there also. But I, I think here with 118 pounds, this horse should definitely get a good run second off the break, so watch out for him. You know, another horse to talk about here is the two horse Al Cow. Kawa, Al Kawa, hopefully I said that right. Six to one. Daniel Thud Hope is on this one. You know, this horse ran a brilliant race a few weeks ago at Ripon. Six frongs and a class two handicap. This horse been second by half length. And, you know, he, he quickened up nicely. He just missed at the end. But again, he, he ran very well. Uh, his two races before that in the fall in class two handicaps at Doncaster, New York, were disaster races. Very tough handicaps with, uh, you know, large 20 horse fields. He never really got into those races. Uh, but before that in Ireland, occur a six frongs and a premier handicap. This horse ran a very good second place finish by one quarter lengths. He just missed at the end, but ran well. I think here, second off the break, he should really run a big one. He should like the going. Um, this, these races are nearly as tough as those races in Yorkshire last um, last fall, fall. So um, watch out for this horse at 6 to 1 also. So to recap my bets for today's seventh race from Epsom, the nightcap from uh, here on Derby Day, it's to 550. Going to go with the, with the number 12 horse here, Ash Pan Sam. I'm going to go. 12 to 8 in the TriCast, so the trifecta. 12 to 8. So, good luck to all. Please follow me on Twitter at Horse Racing Kid 5 for more selections for race courses around the world. And remember to join me next weekend for my Belmont Stakes preview here on YouTube. And also join me in a few weeks' time for my Royal Ascot previews. Um, those should be up, uh, you know, very, very soon. Those, those races are coming up nicely. So, uh, good luck, everybody.